Hello Oscar, Grandpa here. Uh, hope you're well. And uh, Moosey's here as well uh, to say hello. Hoo, 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 hoo. Are you alright Moosey? Mm, I'm alright, I'm alright. Say hello to Oscar. Hello Oscar. Anyway, and hello Bar. Hello Anna Bar. So um, it's lots of love from me and Granny and Auntie Anna and hope you're well. Uh, great pictures of you um, ice skating um, Oscar. You're doing really well. Anyway, I hope you're having fun. And I thought today we would read a bit about Chatter by the same gentleman who does the Mr. Men series. So, Chatter is a sort of monkey from Timbuktu. Whoa. Chatter was a sort of monkey, a Timbuktu monkey. He lived in Peanut Cottage in Timbuktu. It's a lovely cottage, isn't it? And this story is all about something which made Chatter's life miserable. We wouldn't want that, would we, Oscar? And that something was his tail. It was extremely, extraordinarily, amazingly, unexpectedly, quite ridiculously long. Stretched out straight. Look, he's got this long tail. Oh, poor Chatter. Stretched out straight, it would reach from here to <laughs> here. <laughs> it's long, isn't it? And even to here. <laughs> Poor Chatter just didn't know what to do with it. One day Chatter went to have a chat to Woof about it, shutting the door on his tail as he went. Ouch! There he is. Ouch! He's hurt his tail in the door. Woof! was a sort of dog. Why don't you, suggested Woof, sort of hang it round your ears and then it wouldn't get in the way. Good idea, said Chatter. And off he went. It looked a little peculiar, but it did seem to work. <laughs> He's wrapped it tail round his head. Very good, Woof. What do you think, Lucy? Yeah, I think it's a good idea, said Lucy. For a while it was okay. Then it slipped down over Chatter's eyes, and as you know, when you have something over your eyes, you can't see where you're going. Bump. Ouch. Poor Chattel. Chatter rubbed his nose <laughs> after walking into a tree. There he is, walking into a tree, because he can't see where he's going. Oh dear. Chatter went to have a chat to squeak about it, tripping over his tail as he went. Ouch. Squeak was a sort of mouse. Very happy mouse by the look of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Why don't you, suggested Squeak, sort of stretch it out behind you and then it will be out of the way. He smiled. After all, he added, it has to go where you go. Good idea, agreed Chatter. And off he set through the wood. Unfortunately, at the same moment, in the same wood as he set off, off set oink. Oink was a sort of pig. <laughs> there he is riding a bicycle. Can you imagine a pig riding a bicycle, Oscar? On a bicycle. And he ran over Chatter's tail. Oh, ouch. Also that same morning in the same wood, the Timbuktu wizard was out walking. <laughs> Look, that's the Timbuktu wizard. Humming quietly to himself and pondering over a spell or two, and not looking where he was going, he tripped. Silly old tree root, he muttered, but then he looked again and saw that it wasn't a tree root that had tripped him up. Do you know what it was, Oscar? Correct. Yep, I can see a bit of tail there. The Timbuktu wizard, who didn't know where it, what it was, followed it all the way from there to here. <laughs> and all the way back to Chatter. All the way back to Chatter. Wow, said the wizard, what a tale. Please, said Chatter, can you help? No problem, smiled the wizard, and he waved his wizardy wand and muttered some wizardy words. 
And suddenly that extremely extraordinarily, amazingly, unexpectedly, quite ridiculously long tail wasn't long any longer. Chatter was quite overcome and he lived happily ever after. There's the wizard waving his magic wand. And that, as they say, is the end of the tale. That's a nice story about chatter. OK, so why don't we read about Honk? Another story in the same series, Oscar. This should be good too. Honk is a sort of seal from Timbuktu. Honk was a sort of seal, a Timbuktu seal. He lived in North Pole Cottage in Timbuktu. There's his cottage, very nice too. Like all seals, Hank Honk, sorry, Hank, Honk loved to swim, but the problem was that there was only there were only two places to swim in Timbuktu, the river and the sea. So there he is, Honk's looking at the sign, pointing to the river one way and the sea the other way. Wow. And the trouble was that Honk lived a long way from the river and an even longer way from the sea. So do you know what he decided to do? He decided to build a swimming pool in the garden of North Pole Cottage. How sensible. Now, he thought to himself, a swimming pool is a big hole full of water. So the first thing I need is a hole. How sensible. And there Honk is very happy because he's thought of that great idea to build a swimming pool. So he went to town and walked into the shop. Good morning, Honk, said the shopkeeper. What can I do for you? I would like, said Honk to buy a hole. How ridiculous. There he is in the shop. He wants to buy a hole in the ground. Can't buy a hole, can you, Oscar? You've got to dig it out. Silly honk. A what, said the shopkeeper. A hole, repeated honk. Don't be ridiculous, said the shopkeeper, and sent him away. Poor honk. On his way home, honk met Woof. Woof? We've met Woof before, haven't we? Woof was a sort of dog. Oh, Woof, said Honk, I don't suppose by any chance you have a hole lying about anywhere you could let me have. Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> said Woof. Honk met a worm. There's Honk meeting the worm. Aha, he said, you live in a hole, don't you? I do, said the worm. Well, went on Honk, I don't suppose I could buy it from you. Possibly, replied the worm. Right, said Honk. A question, said the worm. If I sell you a hole, what are you going to do with it? Take it home, replied Honk, and put it in my garden. <laughs> oh dear, there's the worm. Oh really, said the worm, and how are you going to get it there? Honk's face fell. I hadn't thought of that, he confessed. His face fell, look, he doesn't know what to do. And then... He had an idea. I don't suppose you could post it to me, he asked. <laughs> Can't post a hole, can you, Oscar? The worm sighed. If you want a hole in your garden, he explained, you have to dig one. You're right, cried Honk. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, you are clever. True, replied the worm modestly and crawled off. There's the clever worm. So what happened next, do you think, Oscar? So... Honk hurried home, found a spade and dug himself a lovely big deep hole. There he is, digging the hole. Wow, that is a big hole. Phew, he thought, he said. Now, he thought, all I have to do is to fill the hole with water and I'll have a lovely swimming pool. Woof happened to be passing. I say, Woof, called out Honk. Could you give me a hand? Certainly, said Woof. What would you like me to do? So there's Honk down the hole asking Woof to help him. Carry this hole down to the river, said Honk. Fill it with water and carry it back. Can't do that, can you, Oscar? Woof looked at Honk, then he looked at the hole, then he looked at Honk again. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, he said. A hole that big is much too heavy to carry. Oh, that's silly. You can't carry any hole can you that would be very difficult however big it was anyway that's a lovely story about honk okay and we've got time to read you another one 
And this story is a story about Snap. Gosh, Snap's a, that's going to be a great story. So, Snap is a sort of crocodile from Timbuktu. Now, you'll probably think that Snap is called Snap because he snaps his teeth, don't you? <laughs> well, he's not. Snap is called Snap because of something he can do, which is something a real crocodile can't do and only a Timbuktu crocodile can do. He can snap his fingers. Can you snap your fingers? There's Snap snapping his fingers. How about you snapping your fingers, Oscar? Can you snap yours? Like that? It's not easy. And you know something? When Snap snaps his fingers, he can make things happen like magic. What about that, Lucy? Why? Hey, good, isn't it? Hey, magic. We want some magic, don't we? So, what's going to happen next? Well... For instance, if Snap was out for a walk and he was feeling thirsty, he would stop, snap his fingers. There he is, snapping his fingers. And guess what? A glass of lemonade would appear in his hand like magic. And he'd drink the lemonade and snap his fingers again. And guess what? The empty glass would disappear. Which is very useful, isn't it? There he is with his glass of lemonade. Whoa. One fine morning, Snap awoke in his bedroom in Toothy Cottage. <laughs> That's a lovely name. He got out of bed, washed his face, cleaned all those teeth of his and went downstairs. He sat down at the empty breakfast table. There he is at the empty breakfast table. And snapped his fingers. So what do you think happened next, young Oscar? Immediately on the table appeared a boiled egg and an egg cup, a piece of butter toast on a plate and a cup of tea. In a cup. All quite magic, isn't it? Snap frowned. And he snapped his fingers again and a spoon to eat the egg appeared in his hand. There it is. There's the spoon to eat his egg in his hand. Snap smiled. And when he'd finished breakfast, he snapped his fingers again. <coughs> and the spoon and the empty tea cup, egg cup and the empty plate and the empty cup simply disappeared. No washing up for snap. snap. Later that day, when out for a walk, he met Woof. Woof was a sort of dog. <coughs> we know that, don't we? He's a nice dog. A Timbuktu dog. Hello, Woof, said Snap. Hello, Snap, said Woof. Nice day, remarked Snap. Yes, but, replied Woof, pointing to the sky where a big black cloud had appeared. Oh, said Snap. There they are, meeting and saying hello to one another. What do you think is going to happen now? It started to rain. Quick, said Woof, let's find somewhere to shelter. No need, said Snap, and snapped his fingers. An umbrella appeared in his hand. Gosh, said Woof. Snap handed the umbrella to Woof. There we are, Woof's got the umbrella now. And snapped his fingers again. Another umbrella appeared. Gosh, said Woof again. I wish I could do that. Woof and Snap, dry under their umbrellas, arrived back at Kennel Cottage, which is where Woof lives in Timbuktu. There's Kennel Cottage and all the rain is coming down, isn't it? Ooh, wow. Thank you very much, said Woof, handing the umbrella back. My pleasure, smiled Snap snapping his fingers and making both umbrellas disappear. Stay for tea, invited Wolf. Lovely, except accepted Snap. There they are, back at Wolf's house. So what happens next, I wonder? And Wolf made a lovely big tea for both of them. What should we do now, asked Wolf when they'd all finished. I know, said Snap. <laughs> there they are, having tea. I know, said Snap, snapping his fingers. A pack of cards appeared in his hand. What a good idea, laughed Woof. What shall we play? <clears throat> and can you, can you guess Can you guess what card game Snap played mm, with Woof? Go on, guess. What, what card game did they play together? Look, he's holding her hand, holding the cards. Of course, that's right. Snap! That's a good story too. Well, there it is, Oscar. That's uh, really some really good reading there. I hope you you enjoyed it, and Annabelle, if she's watching it, enjoys it too. And so, lots of love from me and Granny and Lucy and Auntie Anna to you and all of you and Mummy and Daddy and have have fun, all of you. And we'll speak to you again soon. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. <laughs>